Putting a successful tour together involves anticipating problems with time and distance. And in this video, I'm going to show you what that's all about. Hello and welcome to this video on putting a tour together, part of my series on the live music business. So you've seen how a booking agent works with a promoter to put concerts together for the artists. And part of that process may be they booking a tour. The booking agent, along with the artist and the artist management, are first of all going to identify a period of touring. The booking agents will then approach promoters nationally, regionally, globally, and those promoters will come back with offers to put on that artist in concert. The booking agent will then collate all those offers and send them back to the artist and artist management for their scrutiny. The screen shows an example sheet uh, created by the booking agent which details all the offers that she has received from promoters. Now this is actually a finalised sheet as it shows the offers in some kind of order or routing, which is the route of the tour taking place, in this case, throughout Europe. And this is a major part of the booking agent's job because distance costs money. The further apart two shows are, the more it's going to cost to get from those two shows. In this case, the routing is not that bad. If we look at the map of Europe, the band is American and the first shows are in Scandinavia, so they're going to fly into Scandinavia. Then it's by road, down into Germany, across to Belgium, then I think the next show's in uh, Austria. And then we go back round, we go up into the UK, but there's a whole bunch of festivals and club dates there if you look at that sheet. And then it goes back into Europe. It gets a bit messy for the last four or five shows, but that is not a bad routing. And that's a primary part of what a booking agent does. Get all those offers and try and hammer them into some kind of order based on the availability that the promoters provide. And this is a major part of creating a cost-effective routing for a tour, anticipating these distances. Martin Atkins, who's a musician and educationalist, pointed out that 85 of the top music cities in the US are east of a line that runs from Minnesota down to Texas. And so routing a tour to maximise income, you probably don't want to go west of that line. However, four of your major music cities are west of the line, San Francisco, Seattle, Portland, and Los Angeles. And thinking about music markets, if you were planning a global tour, you would probably want to be hitting your major music markets. And at the moment, worldwide music markets, number three is the UK, four is Germany, and five is France. So any tour is probably going to want to hit those music markets amongst others. I've mentioned festivals quite a lot during this training and festivals are important for revenue and exposure. However, festivals take place at weekends. Club shows in the week don't sell so well during festival season. So for instance, if you're a band from the UK and you get booked to play at Shizge, down in Budapest, it's a long way to go. It's 1,100 miles and will take you 20 hours by road from the UK down to Budapest. Another consideration is days of the week and holidays, and this is a general consideration when booking any entertainment event. People are probably more likely to go out on a Friday or Saturday than they are on a Sunday if they have a regular 9 to 5 job and have to get up and go to work on Monday. Holidays play a big part of this. The screen shows the US national holidays. So for instance, an event taking place on Sunday the 5th of September 
will probably do as equally as well as a Friday or Saturday event because on Monday the 6th it is Labour Day. So all this routing and anticipating days of the week and holidays takes time and an average length of time to put a, a solid tour together would be about six months. The screen shows a timeline. I'll let you read this for a couple of seconds just to see how it works for a tour that's going to take place in October. Obviously the exact details vary from tour to tour, but that six month time frame is pretty standard when planning a tour for a signed or newly signed artist. And as you saw from the timeline, at some point the artist management will bring in extra members of the team to actually make the tour a reality. And the first hire is usually a tour manager, someone like myself. And then I'm responsible for them for bringing all the nuts and bolts to make the tour happen. So my first port of call will be hiring or contacting existing crew, sound and light technicians. If the artist requires it, extra musicians. And we looked at my example of Farry Kisher, who are just three piece. But to make a stage show, they probably hire a drummer and a horn section, for instance. And then the tour manager will reach out to suppliers. So bus companies, sound and light providers, get them on board. And we're looking at how this actually works in subsequent videos. So there you go, that's how a modern tour is put together and the timeline and the anticipation of time and distance to hopefully save money. So I hope you're finding this all useful and if you are, please like and subscribe and thank you so much for watching.